Hello, my name is Justin. I'm a developer advocate at Airbytes. We're gonna be talking about CDC. No, it's not the CDC we're all thinking of. CDC stands for Change Data Capture. Change Data Capture is a software architecture that allows for detecting changes to a database, capturing those changes, and then sending those changes down to our downstream processes or systems to keep everything in sync. One of the use cases CDC could be implemented is through database replication. Let's say there's a source over here in the form of a Postgres database. There is a destination in the form of another Postgres database. The source database has some changes that go on. Let's say we insert a couple new rows and delete one. That would effectively render our destination database out of sync and out of date. So what CDC will allow us to only look at the changes on this end from the source database. We saw two inserts and one delete. We just send those changes. We capture those changes, send those over to our destination database, and then implement it there to keep these two systems in order, in check, and in sync. That's just an example, but what are some of the benefits of implementing CDC for your data teams? Aside from the fact that it keeps all your downstream processes slash systems in the form of databases or data warehouses in sync, it will allow for low latency and actually near real-time analytics and data science. It's also ideal for a modern cloud architecture as it's a very highly efficient way of moving data across a wide area network. An overlooked benefit of CDC is the ability to track delete operations. Detecting deletes in a source database can actually be really difficult when it comes to using incremental batch processing, just because you're only essentially looking at new or updated rows in the source table. And since CDC tracks delete operations, we can easily propagate those over to our target or destination database. Some databases like Postgres to MySQL and SQL Server implement CDC natively, which means that if you're using those solutions, you actually don't even have to implement CDC manually. They'll actually do it for you through their own core functionality, respectively, which means that you can actually have a process that reads CDC logs for you. And then that allows you to easily propagate the changes through the logs over to your target rather than querying a database manually and having to shift those logs over to a different table and then potentially do some changes there. But it doesn't stop there. CDC actually has a couple other methods that you may not have known. And we'll go into those now, starting with table metadata. This method called table metadata is a method in tracking every single row in a table, including when the row was created and updated at. To use this method, you usually have to create additional columns such as created at and updated at or a separate table to track these metadata elements. Tracking metadata is typically used in incremental batch processing to identify new and updated rows. A common way that this method is used is by looking at the updated at column in the destination table first, comparing it to the sources updated at column, depending on the rows you're looking for. And once you find the deltas in the updated at columns for only the rows that have changed when compared from destination to source, then the result is only the deltas depending on the updated at columns will be merged into the destination, rendering both of these databases now in sync. A key challenge for this method is that you actually cannot track deletes, which makes things a little weird when a delete operation does happen in the source database. On top of that, regularly querying the database can be a lot and overload the source database as well. The second method is going to be called table differences. This method identifies the difference between the source and the destination tables to detect new, updated, and even now deleted rows. To spot these differences, you can actually use a SQL query or built-in tool slash utilities provided by some of these databases. For this, a key challenge is identifying changes row by row requires extensive computational resources, so not as efficient. The next two methods are fairly similar, so let's get into these last two. The third method is going to be called database triggers or also called trigger-based CDC. This method requires the creation of a database trigger, which contains logic to manage the metadata within the same table or in a separate bookkeeping table, otherwise called a shadow table. Many databases such as Postgres allow you to create these triggers. You can actually check out how to create one with the link in the description. So essentially these triggers will occur when there are transactions 
actions made in the source database and the logic that we make in the trigger will capture some of those changes slash transactions and put them in the bookkeeping table. Now, some key challenges for this one is that if a transaction does fail, rollback logic need to be implemented in order to make sure that a failed transaction doesn't go through to the shadow table and pushed into the destination. If there are schema changes, the trigger will need to be modified, meaning that this trigger does need to be maintained. If you're using a source like Postgres and then the destination as a MySQL database, the triggers actually won't work since there are key differences in the SQL both of these databases talk. And lastly, the use of triggers can actually slow down transactional workloads. And lastly, and probably what is most common is going to be called log-based CDC. Log-based CDC is pretty much capturing transaction logs in a database. And some of these databases actually include these natively, such as Postgres, MySQL, SQL Server, and even Oracle. As I mentioned, log-based CDC and trigger-based CDC are very, very similar. Both keep a log every single time a transaction is made. So theoretically, the shadow table and the transaction log contain the same exact data. The difference now between log-based and trigger-based CDC is that log-based CDC is a native functionality found in some of these databases. Trigger-based CDC, on the other hand, is a manual function that you have to create along with the logic that goes with it. So the triggers are created and defined by you as the user. Since database logs are updated at every single transaction, that means the experience is very transparent. Log-based CDC doesn't require any logical changes in the database objects or an application to sit on top of these databases. You'll have a system that reads directly from the transaction logs, which will identify any changes made in the database, also minimizing the impact of the capture process. You're only reading from the capture log. You're no longer reading and querying through the whole source database anymore. Now, what are some key challenges for the log-based CDC? There are some operations such as alter and truncate that do not get read in transaction logs. So if you do require that you read these transactions or operations, you'll have to implement some additional logic to capture those. And lastly, if the destination database is down, the transaction logs must be kept intact until the subsequent replication happens. So as you can see, there are different methods of implementing CDC that you probably didn't know of, and I hope those diagrams helped you in understanding them. Like I mentioned, log-based CDC is going to be the one method that a lot of data teams and data engineers implement in their modern data architectures to lower the cost of querying databases, minimizing time, and just having an overall better experience on implementing CDC the right way. I hope you learned something new in this video about CDC. If you have any questions on this topic or anything really in general, post them down in the comment section below. We would be happy happy to answer them. Make sure you all like and subscribe, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace.